Uh, Sinead, first of all, just thanks a million for joining us um, and to go through these, these, these common questions we're getting at FLEX Ireland from people at FLEX. Um, so I don't want to keep you because I know you are incredibly busy, um, but also want to say thank you to you and all your help your colleagues and healthcare workers uh, all across Ireland for the job you're doing at the minute. Um, it's just it's inspiring stuff. So but just to get into the, the questions that we're getting here at Epilepsy Ireland, I suppose the first one and the most common one is, am I at more, uh, more of a risk of contracting the virus, um, coronavirus, and do I need to cocoon? Okay, so in general, there's no evidence of an increased risk of coronavirus in people with epilepsy compared to the general population. However, the risk is increased in people with immune systems, such as those people, older people or those with long-term conditions like diabetes, cancer and chronic lung disease, and that's if they have epilepsy with that as well. While those with seizures are well controlled, may not be at any greater risk, than the rest of the population. Unfortunately, those with uncontrolled seizures, and um, particular seizures triggered by fever or infection or illness, they may be a bit more vulnerable. Um, what I would say is that just to make sure you suggest you follow the government guidelines of social distancing, social isolation, and hand washing is particularly important um, with hand gel if you have it, but if you don't, hand washing is the most important thing. In general, re-cocooning the answer is no. However, if you have an additional illness, as I've already said, then it might be best to um, discuss the specialist. Okay. Um, I suppose another question sort of interlinked with that, um, with that we're getting, Sinead, is, is uh, are anti-epileptic drugs immunosuppressant um, and therefore increase the risk of contracting the virus? In general, I mean, different anti-epileptic drugs have different side effects, okay? And it's hard to actually say that one glove, I suppose, fits all. If you're worried about this in general, I think you should speak to your epilepsy um, service. And with that in mind, I suppose one of the questions we're being asked is, you know, are you still available? Um, and if the answer is yes, absolutely. The epilepsy in our service is open. In fact, it's probably open most of the hospitals more now because we're anxious to keep people out of any but you know if you have um, a question about your epilepsy yes please contact your epilepsy nurse service and as well as that outpatient appointments are still going ahead all the telephone yeah i know that'll be very reassuring for a lot of people who are in touch with us to know that you are still available because yeah. Yeah. quite a big questions out there whether services are, are, are running as normal so that, that's very reassuring for a lot of people uh, and i suppose one of the other things I just want to get across as well is that, you know, if you, your seizure is prolonged and you don't have access to emergency medicine, an ambulance should be called. There's this, I suppose, thought out there that accident and emergency isn't open for the general um, um, queries or illnesses. But um, I would say that accident and emergencies are set up in such a way now that there's two streams. There's yeah. a COVID stream and there's a normal stream. So for those that are anxious about getting the condition, you will be kept away from the people with COVID or suspected COVID. So please, if you're worried about your epilepsy, contact your epilepsy nurse service. Or if it's a different seizure or prolonged seizure, please send out an emergency. Brilliant. You've actually just answered another question that's coming up there, Sinead. So, so that's, that's very reassuring for a lot of people as well to know that the AME still is available there if there is prolonged seizures. Um, I suppose going back to the medication, um, there a, a common. We've actually done an article on this as well, but just to, to give give the expert voice to it, um, is is there going to be epilepsy medication shortages? Shortages, and is there currently any epilepsy medication shortages as a result of the coronavirus? Okay, so what, probably what's causing some of the temporary shortages is that people are stockpiling their medicines. So they're going to the chemist and they're getting the six months supply because they're afraid that, you know, they may run out of, of medicine. There is no evidence to suggest that any of the epilepsy medicines are currently running out of stock. Of course, this could always change, but what I would say to people is please don't order any more than a month supply of your medicines in advance because that will help everybody just be able to avail of their medicine on time. 
the same sort of mentality as that's panic buying, I suppose, that we see in shops is the same applies to, to medical. Yeah. Um, and moving on from that, but still sort of saying staying, staying with the medication. Uh, we've had questions uh, from people who are concerned that if they contract the virus, um, will that have an impact on, on the way their anti-epileptic medication works? Um, or what, can you provide any insight or I suppose that would be very individual as well? I think that probably illness sometimes causes us to feel like we don't want to take our tablets because we feel like too, too unwell to take them or maybe if you had some vomiting as well that would be particularly important to report that because that would be a huge issue if you couldn't take your medicine but um, with regard to epilepsy medicine and, and COVID-19 medicine that's really up to the prescribing doctor to decide if there's any sort of interaction. What I would say to people is watch over the counter medicines such as uh, cough bottles because sometimes they can provoke seizures so always make sure if you're buying something that hasn't been prescribed that's over the counter, check with your pharmacist if there's any interaction between that and the anti epileptic drugs you currently get. Of course, and that'll be good practice regardless of, of COVID or not, that, that, that it should be applied in normal circumstances. It is, it is very important for people with seizures to watch their temperature, watch their illness. Yeah, so, you know, if you felt you were you were developing a temperature, obviously contact your GP. But things like Panadol can be taken to um, temperature if there's no reason why you can't take Panadol in general. You've just um, you've just answered my next two questions as well, Chinese. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and just moving on, I suppose uh, what we're hearing a lot now in terms of coronavirus is a self the word self isolation. And for people with epilepsy, there, there are some of them that are living alone, um, obviously quite concerned what, might, what that might mean to them if they do have to self-isolate. So have you any advice on how they can see, stay safe and manage their epilepsy while self-isolating and being on their own? I suppose that's a very difficult question, Paddy, because seizures themselves cause risk, and particularly those people living alone. What I would say is use a common sense approach. So maybe, you know, email or phone or text your next door neighbor and say, you know, I'm currently worried, I'm self-isolating. Can you just, would you mind phoning me twice a day? Or family members as well. I think if they've any concerns about illness or they feel sick or they're getting sick, make sure and keep regular contact. With people. Yeah, just keep the lines of communication open Absolutely. there. Be it phone, email, social media, I suppose, as well. Absolutely. Let people know what you're at. Um, and, as and just get somebody to check in with them. Yeah, maybe yeah. once or twice a day. Yeah, like uh, as well, you've got it. We're more connected now than ever with FaceTime and video chats and stuff as well. Try and maybe yeah. work up. And like, you know, sometimes as well, it's worth contacting the community resource offices around Ireland as well, because they're local, they're on the ground, and they know you know the local resources that are are, are around. So maybe there's the local GAA club can keep in contact with you. <laughs> so there's loads of people out there are willing. Don't don't know. Yeah, I suppose um this is sort of tying into the 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 this the self isolation as well, um but it, it's more around prescriptions and it's basically the question we're getting is my prescription is due to be renewed for my epilepsy medications and my consultant appointments has been rescheduled until later in the year. What what does that does that person need to do and to continue getting their medication? Well, first of all, from a Beaumont Hospital perspective, I know that we are sending out prescriptions directly to pharmacists. So anybody who's concerned about their prescription, I know GPs can send prescriptions now to your health mail system to the pharmacy. So don't be afraid about running out of your prescription. And then the Minister for Health, Simon Harris, very kindly signed in a new amendment that um, allow your prescription to go from six to nine months. So nobody will be left short. That right, shouldn't that, be. And that'll obviously reduce... I suppose a concern and, and stress that many people might have, which sort of brings me into my next question. Um, undoubtedly, stressful times for for everyone. This doesn't discriminate against anyone at the minute. Uh, unprecedented times, but obviously, stress can lead to seizures, and lack of sleep can lead to seizures. Um, have you any advice 
to people um, who maybe find these times tough and how they can manage their stress and 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 this unprecedented situation we're all living in. Well, I think personally, when COVID started to become headline news, I found myself getting very overwhelmed and anxious around this. So one of the tips I did was limit my social media app. That's been key for me. Yeah. Um, I don't bring my phone to bed. I don't look at the news five times a day. I limit myself to six o'clock news in the evening and that's it. Other than that, I suppose follow a, ge follow a general routine, follow the general advice, get plenty of um, exercise as well is really important, you know, even getting out for that walk for 20 or 30 minutes. They say that you have to um, exercise for 40 minutes to release a, a hormone in your, a chemical in your brain called serotonin. Mm -hmm. So that helps improve your mood and decrease your anxiety. So I think exercise is probably underrated. Mm -hmm. and we probably need to do a little bit more of that. There are some um, apps like um, Pacifica or Headspace that provide um, mindfulness and relaxation techniques. They can be also very helpful. But again, I think keep the lines of communication open. Nobody's alone in this. We're all feeling anxiety. And again, the zeros are there to lift everybody. You can, you can use that. opportunities to maybe reconnect with a couple of people. Um, and you know that, that you, might you know there's well. great there's great things uh, happening like zoom quizzes yeah. and challenges family challenges you know i think they all help to lift our spirit yeah of course of course and i suppose just tying into the news and subscriptions um what i've done myself is actually turned off the push notifications on on my um, on my iphone because it's literally just a barrage of information so yeah i, I like I, I check the news okay. um, but yeah I've turned the off. The more you surround yourself with bad news, the yeah. worse you're going to feel. If you surround yourself with good news and positive behavior, you will feel a whole lot better. And there is some good news stories coming out of this as well. If people are recovering, that's important to, to remember. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. um, I suppose, uh, Sinead, I know this is your area of expertise as well. We are getting some questions in from pregnant uh, ladies with epilepsy. Um, Again, it's, it's sort of tying into questions we have covered, but just to cover them as well. Um, basically, are they asking, are, are they at greater risk of contracting the virus? And is there any further steps they should be taking uh, to reduce the risk of contracting the virus uh, and to manage their epilepsy whilst being pregnant? Well, I know from um, Hollis Street and the Rotunda um, that both hospitals are scheduling appointments so there's minimal contact with people when they actually go to the hospital. First thing I'd like to say is, if you have an appointment with a hospital, please keep it. Mm -hmm. So unless you're showing signs of um, any sort of flu or symptoms of COVID, just make sure you contact the hospital in advance to ask them what they want if they, if they want you to do, because it's really important you attend for your appointments. As yet, there's no evidence that pregnant women who get this infection are at any more risk of serious complications than any other healthy individuals. And if, like I said, you're experiencing any symptoms of COVID, contact your GP and self-isolate at home. Um, if you do contract the virus, one of the questions we've been asked is, will my baby be born with COVID? This is a very new virus. We're really only learning about it. Emerging evidence suggests that transmission from a woman to her baby during pregnancy or birth is probable. I spoke to Dr. Marr in the Rotunda Hospital yesterday. And she said that any woman who's been diagnosed with COVID um, is actually allowed to keep her baby in the room in an incubator. And um, there's strict hand washing and strict handling rules around the baby. The baby's kept in an incubator, but still, you know, everybody's doing their best that they can to keep things as normal as possible. Great. And that's actually covered the next part of my question as well. Um... Sinead, that's covered the most common questions that we've got coming in, but uh, in terms of, like, is there anything else you would like to get out there in terms of, of, of advice, advice for people with epilepsy and their families and, and just this, this unprecedented situation that we are all, we're all facing? I think in summary, if I was to probably give maybe five points, it would be if, don't be afraid to go to accident or emergency. Remember, there's two streams. So if your seizures are prolonged or you're you know you're in an emergency type situation call an ambulance otherwise please contact your epilepsy um, service um, with any queries or concerns you have and remember that the, the, the community resource officers for epilepsy ireland are all around the country with access to 
know what's going on locally, make sure and contact them. Um, with regard to if you have a temperature, contact your GP, self-isolate, and if you can at all, take a paracetamol and watch taking any over-the-counter medicine. And I suppose around anxiety, just make sure to get plenty of exercise, keep yourself well hydrated, and unfollow a lot of the social media platforms, only watch the news once a day. Fantastic, Sinead. Thanks, Mayan, for this. Um, it's, it's, it's great to have, um, like, it's one thing putting it out there in text, but to have an expert voice like yourself just reaffirming the advice that's being issued there for people with epilepsy and it's both the general advice that is being issued by the HSE and the Department of Health, which is the only source of information that people should be following. Um, and actually, I looked at the HSE um, website uh, with regard to COVID, and it's very informative and it's very easy to understand. So access that all the information is out there you just need to know where to find it yeah of course um Shane, thanks man um thank you patty thanks for asking me best luck to you and all your colleagues um over the coming days and weeks and and we'll chat again soon yeah. see you soon bye